is Mr. Wise. Today we're talking about physical and chemical properties and I'm following along with the slideshow about the physical and chemical change notes. Physical properties, start with that. It's characteristic that can be observed without changing the composition of a substance. So when I look at the rock, I can notice its color, I can notice its shape, I can notice, I can hold it in my hand and feel its temperature, I can measure its temperature, I can measure its mass and its volume, all those things I can observe without changing what it is. So there are a variety of physical properties and the key with it being a physical property is something that we can observe without changing the substance. Physical properties include things such as appearance. Appearance such as observations that can be made with your senses, color, shape, luster, nature means shininess, texture, etc. It's also physical properties are things we can do with measurements, volume, mass, density, temperature, um, whether or not it can, it's an insulator or a conductor, it's magnetic or not. All those things are measurements that we can make. And of course, it's state of matter, solid, liquid, gas. Think about water in its different forms. It could be a solid as ice, a liquid as water, or a gas as steam. But molecular, at the molecular level, it's still H2O. And again, this goes on with what we've learned all year long about the kinetic theory of matter, that all matter is made up of atoms and molecules. And those atoms and molecules are in motion. But it, and those atoms and molecules are made of specific atoms, in this case, hydrogen and oxygen, with the water molecule. And it stays regardless if it's a solid, liquid, or gas. A chemical property is a characteristic that cannot be observed without altering the substance. Chemical properties include the ability to burn, the tendency to rust or corrode or react with other substances. And those reactions to other substances could be such as acids and bases. So I have an image here uh, with a variety of different color flames, if you recall the flame test, uh, with its ability to burn. And then I have a picture of a rusty car. Iron uh, is used in the bodies of cars and iron tends to rust. And rust is a chemical reaction. So a chemical property is whether or not something could burn, something could rust or something could react with other substances such as acids and bases. Physical changes and chemical changes. So we have physical properties and we have chemical properties, and then we have physical changes and we have chemical changes. When something has a physical change, its form or appearance may change, but it stays the same. In other words, if the picture of the nail, if, the, if we bend the nail, we've changed its shape, but it's still made up of iron. The iron nail still stays the same. Uh, we talked about water with water can be either ice, a liquid, or a gas. So a solid, liquid, or gas, but it's still H2O. Molecularly, it's the same thing. A physical change does not change or produce a new substance. The shape can change, but the substance does not. We can also dissolve a solid into a liquid. That is a physical change. Earlier in the year, I showed you a picture of the Dead Sea, and we talked about all the salt that crystallized from the Dead Sea. When salt dissolves into water, it is just a physical change because you could evaporate the water off and be left with the salt back, so it did not produce a new substance. State changes are also physical changes. They're related to the kinetic energy of the substance. As you go from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to liquid, and liquid back to solid, so the energy changes, but the substance itself does not. A chemical change is a change that results in the substance's composition. In other words, molecularly, it is changing and we have created something new. Energy may be gained or released during this chemical change. So the temperature may go up or down. You might give off light, you might give off sound. All those are some forms of energy. Color may change. See the picture of the leaves. Uh, the leaves during the summer are green, and there's a chemical reaction that actually stops the production of photosynthesis, and when that happens, the leaves change color. Substances may change odor as a result of a chemical reaction. They're producing a gas, uh, odor, taste. There's a variety of things that accompany a chemical change. 
And finally, we have the formation of a gas or the precipitation of a solid can indicate a chemical change. A precipitate, now that word sounds like precipitation with when we talk about rain, but it, it means something different. Basically, a precipitate is when you take a solution. So you take two liquids and you combine them together and they react. And the result of that reaction is it produces a solid. When a solid is produced as a result of a chemical reaction, we call that a precipitate. And I will have demonstrations. Uh, and we will have some labs that we're going to be going over and you'll be seeing videos of that have a precipitate. So keep that in mind. A precipitate is when a solid is produced from a reaction. And typically our reactions, we're going to do them inside of test tubes. So liquids inside of test tubes for the reactions that we have. Next, you're going to see a paragraph with blanks and the red words are the word banks that go into those particular lines. And this will match up with the notes that are available to you on Google Classroom. On Google Classroom, you should be able to get up the notes, which is a PDF document, which is fillable, meaning that you should be able to click in it, type in it, and that should save to your drive. And then the next time you open it up, if all works out the way I tried it, the next time you open it back up to do the next section of notes, those words should still appear and then you can type on the next section of notes. So you're going to look at this based on the learning that we did, and you're going to fill in those particular words. Same thing with the next several paragraphs as well. You will fill those in based on the lessons that you can go back and review.